The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we come to you at the appointed time, and uh, that is now. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Uh, if you missed the uh, 2 o'clock update, uh, we've got a market that uh, I suspect is really kind of driven by uh, options expiration. I actually had some charts in the uh, newsletter this morning. Um, the resistance was at 370 on the spies. Let's see if I can bring it up. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, here we go. Um, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see. Come on, Mr. Zoom. There we go. Uh, resistance uh, to the uh, as we started this morning was at 370. Um, almost all the charts for options expiration, i.e. where the option market makers would love to see uh, stocks expire to keep as much money as possible and win the lottery, uh, was about there. Now, uh, this is from last night. Um, I've updated. Oh, I've got it updated. Maybe I'll show it later. Uh, but uh, that's kind of it. It's... Um, Yeah, it's, you know, what you're looking for. Anyway, um, 373 is kind of the uh, level that you're looking at. And I don't know if there's a whole lot more going on than that. Uh, did play the uh, Microsoft uh, calls uh, today, and it's gone a little bit farther uh, than we thought. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, even more than I wanted. Anyway, I was looking for a low somewhere around 10.30 or 11 this morning, and it came almost exactly at 11. I uh, got down in the low, uh, what, like uh, 2.35 and a quarter, bought the 2.35 calls. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking, well, I mean, the first resistance was this 2.40. Um, and I'm not going to be greedy on these days. So I started looking at that. I actually sold it uh, just a, a very uh, short time ago. Uh, but uh, watching these options expirations when you know uh, the patterns are actually correct is one of the best way to make a lot of money in options with fairly little risk and not a lot of time to be put into it. Um, I don't know. It's going a lot farther than I thought. I'm not a real greedy guy, but, you know, you've got, uh, I think, maybe 242 on the table for the close. So does this mean anything more than a real big run today? And the belief I have is probably uh, not a whole lot. I don't put a lot of extra uh Emphasis, maybe half the emphasis, if it was a regular day on options expiration. But it's still fairly good. I think we may start seeing a little bit of a wind at our back, and that is uh, the idea uh, that uh, it's, it sounds like about 98% of a possibility or probability that uh, UK is going to have a new prime minister come Monday morning, come hell or high water. Actually, he said probably tomorrow afternoon. And that means that uh, at least there'll be a little bit of stability over there and maybe some people will come back. Uh, there's a, a good chance that they're going to recycle the previous Prime Minister, Boris, and bring him back. And a lot of people uh, that don't live in that country uh, all scratched their head. I've heard about 15 people say the same thing. He's coming back? Um they actually like him, <laughs> which is uh, kind of interesting. They, they kind of, why everybody uh, kind of, uh, at least people in the media, chastise them for, doing, for saying one thing and doing another. 
a lot of the people kind of like the fact that he just ignored all the COVID regulations over there Um, because they didn't either unless uh, somebody was chasing them around. But you live in an Annie state and that's the way it is. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Um, let see. I've got some emails here, so let's see. Uh, uh, Hector says, no, nah, it's not quite to 38, Hector. Not quite uh, on the S&Ps to 3,800. What's see what we actually have here and eh, 3742 um yeah market's a little weaker than i thought it would be maybe it's a lot of that uh uk news that we've had across the last week but also we've had a lot of weak china news at the same time and the market continues uh to be able to uh hang out so what's the da, 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 da. uh are uh, you think that there's something going on here uh for politics and everybody's sniffing that out this is hector's words um that's it um uh can't be sure um you know we're still what uh, i think it's the 8th of november so we still got a couple of weeks out but i have a feeling that a lot of people are starting to uh consolidate markets really love uh a, a president of one party and one or preferably both of the other party in the House and the Senate. Um, not because there's going to be that much that they do. It's mostly because there's going to be a lot that they don't do. So uh, it's kind of the uh, idea that maybe they know a lot more and can plan on what's going to happen because nothing is going to change or very few things are going to change. Uh, my guess is they couldn't even, uh, agree on the sky is blue at the moment. And, uh, that's why the market kind of likes it. At least you know what to plan for. I think that's why the market has uh, traditionally liked it. Uh, okay. We've got that. We got that. We got that. Okay. Got that. Uh, okay. Uh, I got a few others going here, but, uh. Eh, let's do a little history and then we'll uh, move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1879, Thomas Edison perfects the first commercially practical incandescent light bulb using a filament of carbonized cotton thread. His first attempt uh, at this design results in a bulb that lasts about 13 and a half hours. Of course, fairly quickly they get to tungsten. And Thomas Edison only beat out another gentleman from uh, the UK. Boy, I'm going to forget his name. By like a few hours. And that was just because of uh, the place not opening up. But... uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's fun. They're having fun in the den. Anyway, on this day in 1879, longest lasting incandescent light bulb uh, was turned on in 1905 and is burned uh, continuously in a fire station out in uh, Livermore, California. We'll be back in a minute. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Uh, John asks, uh, when you buy options, what are your parameters? I do it two ways. Either I'm buying something that's like two weeks out or I'm buying them either Thursday or Friday before monthly options expiration on a rare occasion. I will buy one of those on a Friday. Um, I like uh, the premiums to wind down to just about nothing and then put that together with uh, very good charts and a lot of other stuff. Um, I've made kind of a, uh, what would you call it, a business out of trading monthly options expirations. And for the most part, you got quad witching, so that takes out uh, three months of a year where my methods don't work very well for a variety of reasons. Um, out of those eight, you get probably seven out of the eight, you're going to get a fairly good indication from the options where they're going to expire. And that's what we were looking at uh, today in the option play. But I either want to buy a lot of time or I want to buy no time. And like today, we bought the 235 Microsofts. Uh, and I probably would have bought the 23750s, but I had already put it in the newsletter uh, I was thinking maybe we'd get down a little bit less, but I like to buy out of the money ones for expiration on the same day and then have them move in. I want to see a four to five uh, time win when I do win because I know I'm probably going to lose about half the time. But uh, if you lose 50 percent, but you make 400 percent on the times you win, um, it's always a great day. But uh, like that, I was going to say on the very bottom end, you could have bought the uh, options on the 235 today on Microsoft for about a buck fifty. Maybe you bought them for a buck seventy-five or two bucks. Uh, but uh, you could have gotten out of them uh, easily at six bucks. So not quite. Uh, if you bought at the very high, you probably got what uh, bought for two bucks, sold for six, maybe more, depending on how long. I wanted to sell at uh, 240, excuse me, yeah, 240 earlier, but that was at uh, 9 o'clock. And again, uh, as uh, the famous uh, 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 what was it? Uh, German general said, I can't remember his name, 
but he said, uh, no plan uh, survives first contact with the enemy. Uh, but uh, you can get a pretty good idea. I did know uh, that generally you're going to get some kind of low in the market that sh if you're going to have a big day like today is they're going to shake you out, and that's probably going to happen at 1030 to 11 o'clock, sometimes as long as 1030. Or 1130, excuse me. But somewhere in that area, they're going to they're going to make everybody cough up at the lowest level their options that are probably going to be worth a great deal by the end of the day on options expiration. Now, sometimes that's to the downside, sometimes to the upside. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll have four or five or six. Uh, this is a, a tough market, and it is a bear market, so I'm not uh, running around buying calls all the time. Uh, but uh, I went and looked through about 30 of them last night that I thought looked like they had good chart patterns and went through the options tomorrow before, the, uh, uh, before my newsletter went out. And Microsoft looked the best for its chart and the best for the way the options were positioned uh, for it to move up. Now, so that's on the short side, which is what I did today. Uh, if I'm going out, I want to go something like two to four weeks, or I want to buy something uh, that expires uh, tomorrow or today. And some of my best trades have been all like today on Microsoft have been these ones. In fact, I will, eh, you know, you, you want to sell as I end every show is sell when you can. Uh, and so we did that. I think the newsletter went out when it was at. Uh, 241.50 to sell, but I was kind of saying 240. I thought maybe we might get a little bit better entry, but that was it. We got, uh, I think it got to 235 and a quarter or something. 877-927-6648. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, what, how long have I been doing it? My first article came out in uh, at Christmas of 2004 on trading expiration uh, in stocks and commodities. Um, if you're new to the uh, station, you've never seen that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's changed, but it's a good explanation. And uh, if you just email me, I'll send you a PDF of that article for uh, stocks and commodities. Christmas of 2004. 877-927-6648. Uh, Okay, take a look at Sam, which we will take a look at now. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand if you really think that who's ever on the wrong side hasn't covered already. Or is, you know, they're going to cover at the close. So I'm not a big fan of uh, shorting Boston beer uh, 400 puts to the close. Maybe there's something else I haven't seen. I've been watching in her day. But if I'm just looking at this, you've got plenty of volume. You're above the previous high with uh, maybe two or three times volume. Um, you may have too much money, or I mean too much money coming in at once. You may have a buying climax. But I don't think that buying climax resolves itself till Monday or Tuesday next week. Um, there's an old saying, you're not going to get out er uh, easily. And my guess is there are probably a lot of people that were short Boston beer. Let's uh, take a quick look and see how many people are short it. Maybe this is one of the ones that had a lot of people all over it. Well, certainly on a daily basis the last two days, um, 23%, 21%. Uh, let's see what we had on the bi-monthly. Uh, oh, you got seven days to cover. I would not touch this at all before the end of the day. Uh, anything over five days to cover for me uh, is just a suicide pact on shorting it. Um, that's because it's just too easy, especially in this market, uh, to run stocks. But man, yeah, so I would have would I would have looked at that and said mm, on that gap up this morning, I probably would have if I had looked at that. I know it was in my list 
of shorts. Um, I just didn't pay any attention to it. Uh, but yeah, that, that is huge. Uh, but yeah, seven days to cover. If you're new to the show, don't trade. Uh, days to cover is a metric I like better than the short percentage. That is how many days would it take if just the shorts wanted to cover at the average volume for the last 30 days. So it would take seven days just for the shorts to get out. So this is where you get these monster moves and why I avoid, like the plague, being short stocks with massive days to cover. And, uh, and it's got 8.5% short, which is not that bad. It's just there's not that much volume. So you get going, uh, narrow entrances and narrow exits. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And during the break, we had a lot of people ask uh, for that article, um, path at TFNN.com, if you want a question on the show today or if you want to look at that PDF. Uh, again, some stuff has changed over the time, uh, but the uh, basic ideas of uh, what and how it works. Um, well, I'll go back to 1902 uh, with uh, a gentleman that uh, went to a, uh, a kind of a, a farm. What would you call it? Eh, like a, a, a fair. Uh, and uh, they had a bunch of folks. Uh, guessing at how much a uh, cow weighed, and the one that was closest would win the cow. Uh, and this guy was kind of interested. I think his name was Galton. And he uh, gave a couple bucks to the uh, proprietor of the fair to get all the guesses and went and found out that the average of the guesses 
even though there were some that were way off, both high and low, uh, the average of the guesses uh, was closer than anybody's individual guess. And that has become uh, known as the wisdom of crowds. Um, I kind of uh, subscribe to that theory in a lot of stuff, uh, including uh, the uh, newsletters morning. Uh, I don't put it in every day, but I do have it. And that is uh, to, to, to uh, the TD9s. And... Why a lot of these things are a little bit better than a flip of a coin, uh, a lot of times when you put them a, a great deal together of them, like all of them, in this case, uh, the one on the top uh, is a histogram of those. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, kind of the last big hurrah, uh, which is another reason why I thought we were going to bounce today. We had uh, over 100 stocks on the uh uh, minus nine of the TD9. We didn't have a lot of stuff following. In fact, we got a good six days out. We had a few that uh, went lower yesterday to bring a, a, a decent amount of ones and twos. But uh, for the most part, if the market's fairly balanced and inside uh, a standard uh, distribution, that's fairly good. But when you see the end of the road for people selling stocks as we had, I'm not and haven't been rather bearish for a little while. Um, and of course, the other big thing that happened, eh, can I put it up here, was that we started, uh, I was kind of worried before, one of the reasons I stayed out, uh, let me see if I can find it here, to, 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 was the equity put call. But uh, we had a, uh, I think one, I think in 10 days in the last 20 years uh, on the 14th, we had the record and biggest low in the uh, uh, VIX in the put call ratio on it. And that always makes me a little nervous because uh, there's always a lot of downside potentially in the market. Um, I like it when there are a lot of bears in the market. Um, if I'm bearish, I don't want anybody in the market. And I'm going to look for huge swings to the downside, as we've seen. But once we start getting people back and involved and bearish in the market, what it really does is mean that you're not you're going to have those people buying on the way down, and you're going to have an opportunity to get out. Um, almost every big huge gap down has been based on very few, if anybody, being short. There's always some people that are going to be short, whatever. But I mean, for the most part. When you see huge numbers um, of one side or the other on the put call ratio, especially on the VIX, I like the VIX better uh, because it's just the premiums on the puts and calls, and there's no in the money uh, options at that time. And that gives you an idea of what if anybody's looking for any big move. And of course, we got those big uh, moves both up and to the downside. But uh, when we had that VIX uh, get back to uh, basically one, uh, almost one-to-one -one on the put-call ratio, it, that lets you know that there's enough shorts probably out there. I think you can infer uh, that uh, there are uh, a lot of people shorting the market. And doesn't mean you're going to be right. It does mean that I think you can put a and imply a risk uh, that's much lower to the downside than uh, on a day when you only get 15% uh, of a put call ratio. And of course, uh, since they're not in the money, uh, that really connotes either a hedge or uh, the other thing, which is uh, that somebody is buying some deep uh, protection. So eh, that's it uh, on that. 877-927-6648 if you want to talk. On the phone. Okay. Um, somebody in the den has a question. Um, there is, and hey, maybe I'll if I if I during the next break if I have a chance, I'm going to bring it out. Um, and that is a uh, uh, the different patterns that options can make, and I'll just go through them. I, I generally, I've done some uh, 
webinars on it before. The problem is if you don't have my system uh, and you're not doing the data and you're not calculating it every day, it doesn't quite mean the same thing. I get to, to look at a lot of them and I think that's given me the kind of experience that generally most people won't have in looking at those patterns, but we will show them. Uh, I should have an opportunity during the break to get it. Uh, those people asking uh, out here, we will. Okay, and see. Uh, can we get a winner winner for SLB? I was actually uh, going to go through these uh, uh, these things, but yeah, um, Schlumberger. So uh, you've broken above the previous low today. I mean, the previous high. That was the June 8th high. That had 15 million shares. You've got 27 million shares. That's a sign of strength. Now, one of the things that uh, Tim Ord talked about early on in my trading, he probably doesn't talk about it as much. Uh, I probably talk more about it than him these days, uh, is the kind of uh, three bear, uh, is that three bears? And the, yeah, yeah. Where the one, uh, the uh, porridge is uh, uh, too cold, just right, and too hot. Um, but there's always this kind of idea where you do get a, sell, uh, a selling or a buying climax when you get just huge amounts of volume. If you get 100, or I mean 200% or 100% more volume, that's okay. You get 200%, probably still okay. On the edge of getting 300% more volume on a breakout, that's where you really want to start looking at the possibility of just having a uh, a buying climax as you break through these so you know you're just a hair under uh, two uh, hundred percent uh, of the volume of the previous high that's exactly where you like it that's how these things that just go on and on and on they don't uh, they don't blow off with um, uh, you know 500 percent of the volume of the previous high so yes we can get a winner winner chicken dinner um so we'll, we'll give it uh We'll give it uh, a party horn. And see what else here. Uh, we'll think about it. Uh, we have only about 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and check uh, volume over most of these TFNN stations already. Well, we're doing much better. Uh, it looks like we're going to get into the 12 billion maybe 12 and a half billion share mark by the end of the day, 8.1 billion shares. We'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we come back, let me, uh, I got a few emails here. Let me clear these out and uh, get them out so I'm not backed up here. And then we're going to go into uh, this uh, paper I have for my webinars on this. Um, but there's a lot of different patterns um, when you look at the curve. The, call it the options uh, expiry or the uh, smile on it. And there's a lot of different patterns. Uh, this is the one that generally uh, the distribution that you'll normally get uh, on options. And we'll go here just a little bit farther out. Um, but uh, if you look at just to where the money's going to expire, uh, sometimes you get these big U's. And all that means is it doesn't matter for the option market maker if the thing goes higher or lower. Um, it's pretty much the same, you know, if the stock goes $5 higher today or tomorrow uh, or lower tomorrow on uh, expiration, uh, they don't have much to risk. Uh, you have more of a uh, pattern that you see a lot uh, with, uh, with uh, low dollar stocks uh, and uh, news coming like uh, earnings. And that is you'll have just one huge side uh, that's... Uh, that has uh, kind of the expiration movement on it. And so that's it. It's just telling you that they only want to take one side of the trade. And it's generally because the stock is extremely cheap uh, or extremely expensive. So, um, you know, they're not willing to, they're thinking it's going to go the other way and all this money is going to go to their uh, kids' uh, education and college fund. Uh, at the option market makers. Some people call this the kind of the hockey stick, at least I do, pattern. Uh, but this is just the money that is going to go uh, get paid out or not get paid out. Uh, there's a one, and this is a lot more like what we see in uh, Microsoft today. I call it either the goblet or the, uh, 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 the wine glass, uh, but more it, it's not as quite as a U, but it's a little bit wider. Um, and then there's really V's, which at Microsoft was somewhere between this goblet and a real V. Um, I thought that, you know, 240 would probably be pretty good uh, if you bought it at 235 today. Um, it was, the V on that was actually uh, where about it is. Let's take a look. I haven't checked. Uh, let's see, eh, yeah. So I got a pretty good sell in there, uh, above 241. So yeah. So anyway, uh, the V patterns are really what you're looking for on options expiration. If you can find them, they're not always there, and it's not every stock's going to have them. I like I said, I looked at 30 or 40 stocks last night and this morning, and that one just stood out. Uh, the Microsoft one, both in the chart. And this stood out uh, the best. 
Um, a lot of times you'll have uh, more of these hockey stick things. Will you have uh, that on both sides? And people are just, uh, you know, they're more than willing to sell if the thing goes higher or buy if it goes lower. So you sometimes get these kind of weird patterns. Um, I've never been able to make heads or tails about predicting the future of those so much. But uh, you got a lot. And some of them will be like this, which is kind of a wall higher. And, yeah, can it go from 55 down to 45? Is that going to make a huge amount of difference to the market maker? Probably not. Uh, but they're pretty much betting this on this blue line here that uh, ain't going any higher. So, you know, when you actually look at that. Now, one guy asked in the den, the reason I brought this up uh, was because of Coder uh, in the den who brought this up. And he said, uh, heard a guru say there's a point in the slope of the option delta where delta 30 percent and 70 cent slope is steeper between delta 30 percent and 70 cent. Then that starts to flatten out the uh, outside of the range. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't really understand that the stock market has what's ca called fat tails. And that is in any other, well, I'd say 90% of uh, events or uh, any kind of data you look at, it's going to have some kind of thing that looks like a bell curve. On the options uh, and in the stock market, very different. And that is you're going to have uh, get to a low, and everybody's going to say we've been down for nine days, so we're not going down another day. Well, that works about 75% of the time. But then you get what they call these fat tails, and I've exaggerated it on both the upside and the downside. Um, there's a better explanation than I can give you right now uh, from Nassim Tlaib. He calls it the fourth quadrant. And in that quadrant, uh, it's more about uh, a lot of people being off sides uh, uh, than actually being, how can I explain this, more than, uh, than uh, you know, they're either way too hedged or they've got a loan that's going to get uh, – get uh, called or they've got uh, margin that's being dropped in a, in a uh, especially in uh, uh, commodities where you know they come along and everybody's been making a lot of money it's all suddenly they drop uh, the margin in half and everybody has to sell stuff um, there are enough of these and Nassim, Nassim, Nassim Tlaib has made money betting on them because almost no one does. The options, he says, are vastly underpriced. And he will bet on these for two, three years. Uh, and then one comes off and he makes 50 to one. And he's pretty happy. Uh, the people that actually wrote the options, probably not happy. I've kind of got a modified view of that. But, uh, again, I need a lot of conditions to be correct, and one of those is to be in options that I can lose very little and make on a percentage basis a whole lot, and that's why I like options expiration trading. Some people call it white lightning. Um, you know, if you do it right, I don't know if that's the right description of it. Uh, I just know that over time I can make 400% on the times I'm right on average. Um, I'm going to lose probably all of it about half that time. Um, so if you lose 100% and you make 400%, uh, overall you're probably going to make 200%, and it's actually a fairly good business to be in. But uh, it's not one of these things where you win every time, but when you win, uh, the uh, return is so overwhelming as to the losses generally uh, that you can do it. And two, if you've got a lot of self-discipline, that you just wait and you wait and you wait, um, and you're willing to bypass ones that don't look good, um, you can do very well. Anyway, I hated the bear market, but this looks so good on Microsoft that I had to take it today. And uh, I sold when I could, not when I had to for those uh, calls. We'll be back in a minute.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get back... Uh... Well, we pretty much got the options expiration that I was looking for, maybe a little higher in the S&Ps uh, than I thought earlier this morning, but we broke through the resistance and went back up to the next level. Uh, so that's it. Again, I don't make a great deal more on options expiration deal uh, than I would uh, two weeks ago because uh, it's probably, if the signal's like a one, then I'll give it a half on options expiration. There's too many cross currents and stuff going on. Now we go on in options expiration to the rollover on Monday and Tuesday. Somebody asked in the DIN um, something that kind of brought something to mind, and that is you want to, or if there's two days that even out almost anything, it is the rollover Monday and Tuesday after options expiration week. It's pretty rare to get any kind of significant move between those. That is the days that a lot of the hedges come on and off. They put new ones on, and the market makers and uh, most of the people on the street are pushing stuff up or down. And then pretty much by Wednesday, we get back uh, to the market and the direction it's going to take. So I wouldn't get too excited about today, but I also wouldn't say that Monday the uh, uh, pants are going to fall off everybody. Uh, probably have a good uh, 
belief that by Monday morning, probably by Sunday before the markets open again, uh, that the uh, UK market or uh, the uh, UK will have a new prime minister and already announced that may savage uh, settle. What is that? The settle the savage beast? I forget. Whatever they said about King Kong, the beauty that uh, uh, settled the savage beast. So we may get a little bit of that on Monday, but uh, I wouldn't get too uh, far over the tips of our skis. Uh, hang on for Tom O'Brien. And uh, so when you can, not when you have to, we'll be back Monday. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to